Well, here we are again, XFM, on a Saturday. Just gone one o'clock, Steve, mm -hmm. if I'm very much mistaken. But we're not here, no. as such. We're away again, gallivanting <laughs> around. Okay. Uh, um, we've got to do the special sort of best of again. Okay. Which we did a few weeks ago, so this is the best of the last three weeks. <laughs> um, which I think is, I mean, I think it's the best three weeks we've ever had. <laughs> but I'd like it condensed into two hours. Yeah. Yeah. Um, some great music as well in there? Yeah, there'll be some great music, uh, uh interspersed with, with fine chat that you've already heard. <laughs> yeah. Well, except this bit, this bit's new. We've actually, uh, out of the kindness of our heart, we've come in, um, we've come in last week. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And we've done a few clips. Just because we felt a bit guilty about shooting off. Yeah. And I mean, I, even now, having heard this link, I'm beginning to wonder if it was worth our time. Oh, dear. You know, I've, I've said in the past to you, Rick, that my grandparents, so I love them dearly, but it's like for the last 30 years, they've been waiting to die. I know. It's yeah. like they just sort of, it's like, you know, the novelty wore off of like. <laughs> just, life in the 50s. Yeah, they got kind of bored of it. Like, yeah, <laughs> in the 40s, it was brilliant. All <laughs> sat around the old Joanna's, the bombs <laughs> yeah. fell, singing. They loved <laughs> that. The 50s, you know, that was great as well, because that was the post war years. It was, you know, it was a bit tight in the pocket, but it was all right. Everyone pulled together. And then the 60s came along, all the crazy music, the let's, funny hair. Let's stay in bed. They, they, exactly. And they basically stayed in bed. And uh, it was one Christmas when um, my, my, my grandmother said to my dad, uh, What do you like for Christmas? What, what do you fancy for Christmas? And uh, this must have been, I don't know, 20 years ago. She said, uh, what do you, uh, what do you fancy for Christmas, Ron? And he went, well, you know, I could do with the most big kind of warm winter overcoat. She said, don't worry about that. Said, don't worry about that, because your father will be dead soon. It's right, you can have his. Meaning my granddad. Well, to be honest with you, my father's still waiting. <laughs> Which is good news. Good news for my grandfather. <laughs> Less good news for he's my dad. Freezing. He's freezing. He's freezing. He's freezing. Oh, he finds out. Oh, is he today? He's yeah. fine. Oh, okay. okay. Oh, I'm freezing. It is for, it's such a weird uh, mindset, that. I think it's that, to me, is what sums up people from that older generation, the 40s and 50s. And it seems to me that you've got that kind of mindset. It's like you were born in the 30s. And whenever you talk of your childhood, it's like you had, like, a baked I've, potato to take well, to I've, school. I've, uh, and no, a poop but and a stick as a Christmas The gift. other thing is, I think that it, 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 that sort of generation, it, it seems that the man is dependent on the woman. Mm. As a total dependent. Oh, absolutely. If, yeah. if she dies, he's done. Yes. He's yes. done for. It, yeah. it just pine away. If he dies, she's got 30 years of pottering. <laughs> absolutely, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, and going yeah. to like, you know, uh, the, the youth club and the yeah, church. Yeah, I know what you mean, yeah. It, it's sort of like that it's, it, it was, it's sad, of course it's sad for them, but it's so, not the end of their life. No, sure. And it sort of is the other way around. I don't I know, know why that is. Yeah. It's terrible. That's a little melancholy thought for uh, I know, I've really time. brought it, you brought it down, you've brought it down, I've brought it, this isn't a nice show at all, this is terrible. Well, We're gonna have really people make just it's... killing themselves. Uh, what? Well, I, d I didn't really want to make it a Christmassy type show because I don't, you don't really like it. Oh, he's done it again. Well, he did Christmas once, didn't like it. No, he, my dad always told me. Alright, steady on. Dad said Christmas morning was for like, you know, for me. So he used to stay in bed. Mm. So he, ne he never. That's did brilliant. Fun. That's a great thing to say, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Christmas morning's for you. <laughs> Run wild. Do what you want. Just yeah, don't bother me. I'm going to Honolulu <laughs> for two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Dad, it's Christmas. Do I have to do anything? No. So my mum used to get up because she used to like to see my face light up, you know, when, when I opened the presents. And <laughs> then, uh. <laughs> to give fireworks. And then, uh. <laughs> <laughs> then I'd have to go to my bedroom from about six o'clock onwards because, like, my mum and dad were into having big Christmas parties and I wasn't, like, old enough to go. Right. So they'd say, right, you know, you've had your fun there, you go up to your bedroom, stay in there. <laughs> really? Uh, yeah, I remember one year, right? I got, got a train set, that's what I wanted. Yeah. Right? Brilliant. <laughs> Uh, playing with it all day. I thought, I don't mind about the party, I'm happy staying up here, playing with this. Brother comes in, he's had a few, right, he's going, yeah, give us a go on your How train. How old is he? He's, he's a bit older than me, so he, he might have been like, uh, let's see. Well, let, me, let him be 18. About, yeah, probably about 18, 19, and something like you? that. I was, well, I had a train set, so, I don't know, about- 14. <laughs> something like that. Yeah. Right, so, uh, so I'm playing on that, loving it and stuff, and then he comes in and goes, oh, give us a go. He turns the transformer up to like 14, he went really fast for about five seconds, broke it, and then he went back downstairs. Wow. So Christmas, I haven't even got Sounds Christmas Sounds like day. the, uh, Conservative government with, uh, British Rail. Satire, <laughs> <laughs> Satire, Rick, I well, just thought that there's satire. It's just There's insane. only satirical it's, it's shows this, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't work in any way, because it's, there's, there's, the analogy falls down, no, apart from there being a train. Think it through, though, British Rail was trains. <laughs> yeah. And the government broke the trains in many, well, they didn't break them, like, not officially breaking them, but they kind oh, of, yeah. It's yeah, it does work, it's perfect. <laughs> oh, I'm pretty pleased with that. And I can't, and, and no one's asked him to be on, have I got news for you? <laughs> it's weird, isn't it? Because it, it is strange, that. <laughs> Yeah. When you've got a satirical mind that that's, that's as quick as that. Yeah. Right. And it, it's broke your little train set. So what did you do? 
I just like watch telly and had some sausages. <laughs> I bet you were happy with that though, weren't you? Uh, it's a bit annoying though, isn't it, when your main present of the year has been broke. And and then, did, it, uh, did it ever get it fixed? No, that was it. That was it. Put away. I'm intrigued why your parents wouldn't let you come and join in the festive fun. Was because it like really debauched down there? Was it like eggnog nah, everywhere? Well, no, like but that. I mean, it's fair enough. Six seems a little bit early, but I just think, you know, if you're your kid, you, you, you know, he had those fun, put him to bed, put him to bed at eight, maybe. <laughs> and he was. on Christmas Day? I thought that was a day for family. Well, not if there's a party going on. I well, don't have the party on the Christmas Day. Well, that's, that's, that's another option. Yeah. yeah. Your parents are weird, aren't they? A strange breed. Well, I think that was the year, right? I, uh, <laughs> You're talking about buying presents and stuff. I think I did treat my mum to. I didn't buy my dad anything. I think that was like when I got a bit older, he used to get me dad something because he wasn't that bothered anyway. No. Mm. So, uh, got me mum. Uh, there was a cheap shop, right? <laughs> of course. Uh, Thank God for that. Called Snips. Right? <laughs> so I went in there and I thought, let's see what I can get her. And remember, uh, Victoria Plum? I don't think so. Well, it's like a, a fairy character. Right. Right? I mean, mum's into gnomes <laughs> and stuff, right? So, I thought, right, <laughs> she must be pleased with you, then. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, Victoria uh, Plum. I was thinking, is that one of the neighbours? Is it, is it like a brandy yeah, Do liqueur? you remember Victoria Plum? Victoria Plum. Victoria Plum, yeah, it's like a little fictional sort of character, right? Okay, okay. So, uh, so I saw it, I thought, yeah, she'll love that. Right. So I did my paper round, saved up for two weeks, right? Oh. Got that sorted, went to Snips. Bought the uh, Victoria Plum. Next day, I'm in I'm in town with her, right? So I think, ah, oh, I know what I'll do. I said, come come in here a minute, right? Uh, so we go in and we're looking around, and I tested her, right? I went, look at that there. That's all right, isn't it? And she goes, oh, it's bloody awful. <laughs> oh, Carl. <laughs> oh, Carl. I just I I. Oh God! So then Christmas Day comes. And I said, oh. "Don't bother opening it." She said, "No, no, why?" Said, oh no! Why did you still give it to her? So well, it was too late. I'd already bought it. Oh God! So she opened it, and I was like, <sighs> and she said, "Oh, that's nice." I said, "Why are you saying that?" I said, "The other day, so it's bloody awful." She said, "Oh no, I thought you were pointing at something else." Brilliant. Oh no! So that's why I don't get anyone anything anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Oh God! Oh God! Oh! <laughs> SFM one hundred four point nine. We're not here. Um, this next clip is one of my favourite clips. Uh, look, it needs no introduction. Here it is. Something. Uh, <laughs> something else we're giving away. Go on. Um, <laughs> the Shining. It's just more throwing away, isn't it? Like, once again, is it on video. Once again, it's on VHS. Just because you buy it out of your own money, Carl, stop being so mean. And I want to watch it tonight because it's one of those films that, um. <laughs> so you're, you're gonna watch this video mm -hmm. and then you're gonna send it to someone as a prize? Yeah, it's one of them th films that. <laughs> so, <laughs> sorry, you, you just said yes to that without <laughs> blinking. Oh, yeah. You don't think, like, Les Dennis doesn't have a quick go in the car <laughs> on Family <laughs> Fortune before he gives it away? <laughs> it costs five ninety nine. Jim Bowen has a go at those his nerd towel racks. <laughs> it costs five ninety nine, Carl. Okay, this is uh, Carl uh, in in the classic The Shining. And what's the question? Well, we might ask that afterwards. Okay then. Still, uh, still trying to write the uh, the book then? No? Yes. Funny, someone uh, told me the other day, weird thing about a typewriter, the top row of letters, the longest word you can write is typewriter. Oh, I'll just show you. Just That's weird, isn't it? It's just the typewriter being, you're not, you're not in the mood, are you? you're just going to, you're in one of those grouchy moods again, that you get into when you're writing. You're not being grouchy, I just want to finish my work. Yeah, no, it's just, she being a bit funny, a bit off-hand than that. Uh, let me explain something to you. Go on. Whenever you come in here and interrupt me, you're breaking my concentration, you're distracting me, and it will then take you time to get back to where I was. Understand? Yeah, but I, I just was coming in to try and cheer you up, you know, if you... I mean, I, I'm full of ideas as well, you know, if you're having a problem coming up with stuff. Got loads of stuff, loads of ideas you could write about. The other day I read about this airy Chinese kid. <clears throat> what do you want me to do about it? No, it's just that it, it could make a, a good book. Do you know what I mean? Sort of following round. Uh, That's swell. Well, I, I'd buy it. You know. But if you don't want to know, 
won't have to, don't bother doing it. But, do you know what I mean? It's just airy Chinese kid. It's, it's weird because they're not normally that airy over there. Yeah, this kid caked in it. But if you don't care... I wouldn't touch one hair on his goddamn little head. You won't have to touch any hair on his head. Like I say, he's covered. Leave the head alone if you want. Touch his hands. He's, he's totally covered in it, but... It, it, I love the little son of a bitch. Well, don't go that far. You haven't met him, but I can sort it I'd out. do anything for him. I don't think you'd expect that much. Just check him to the barbers three or four times a week. You know, he's a good, good little kid. In fact, I'll do it. I think I'll write a book on him. Yeah? How do you think you can handle that? Yeah. You're not too busy, are you? Well, I, <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty busy. I've got to sort out some, uh, some monkey facts. For the show this Saturday, but I, I reckon I can still. Why don't you start right now and get out of here? All right, I will. If you're going to be like that, couldn't borrow a pen, could I? See you later. There you Hunting. go. Haunting stuff there, Carl Pilkerton in The Shining. You know, in the film, Jack Nicholson goes crazy because the suggestion is he's maybe possessed by demons that maybe uh, are in the in the hotel. But you know, if I was stranded in a desolate hotel, removed from all human contact with Carl, I'd go mental with an axe <laughs> without being possessed by demons. <laughs> <laughs> That's more chilling to me, trying to get some work done and you keep wandering in. I'm trying to get Carl to spend a couple of days in the caravan with me. <laughs> just for the head of it. And he, he was, he won't. I've offered him money, won't I? I, I think it'd be a great laugh, wouldn't it, Carl? Oh yeah, great. That would be terrifying. No, I want to film it. I just want to film you. it. Like a little video diary, there's Carl there, he's just waking up. Well, and if I was stranded in there, that would be like being, I may as well be with Freddy Krueger and Jason Voorhees. <laughs> It, that's, that's more scary. The thing the is, Ricky doesn't mess you about as much as he messes me about. No, you see, you've given him an inch. You've given him an inch and he's taken a yard. 12.30 you got in today. In, uh, 30 minutes between 12.30 and 1. The old bin lid on the head, if you wanted <laughs> to do that again. Yep. Uh, squeezing my head, think he had a go at. And, uh, karate chop on the back of the neck. Yeah. All in 30 minutes. Yeah. Who else can say that? Who <laughs> <laughs> say that? <laughs> XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais show with, uh, Steve Merchant. Hello there. Yeah. And, um, we're not here this week. We're off jetting around the world, so we've pre-recorded these links. Uh, the time is currently somewhere between one and three o'clock. So, uh, a time check there from Steve Merchant. <laughs> no problem. Yeah, and, uh, oh, what, what about this weather? Um, isn't it warm, stroke, edit that, Carl, cold, okay, whichever one. Mm. Um, I'm pleased to see that the congestion charge has had some considerable effect. Had no effect. So just, yeah. Um, oh, wasn't that great on telly last night, the film? <laughs> yeah. I particularly enjoyed last night's EastEnders, Coronation Street, Brookside. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah. But... <laughs> 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 Ooh, those boys can rock there. That's the guns with all their roses. And sweet child of mine. <laughs> On oh, XFM 104.9. I enjoyed that. Yeah. That yeah. was good. It rocks. It I, rocks hope, I hope the audience was playing it loud like us. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Ricky Jones, <sighs> Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Well, look at him yawning. How rude is that? Carl, what's wrong with you, man? Have you been up late? A little bit. Girlfriend was away, wasn't she, yesterday? Yeah, I always have a problem with that. I always have- I can't- Cos you don't go to bed, do you, early? <laughs> do you know what I mean? You what? sort of think- I, I just always find mm. that thing that if, you know, you're used to living with someone- Yeah. One of you will go, well, let's go to bed, then you'll go, all right. Um, but when you're on your own, you go, oh, You just forget to go to bed. So you I just to stay up. Okay, was, stop- stop eating now, Carl, you've had all the food, that's just a plate, all right, okay. Yeah. No, I just- I, I stayed up and watched, um, there was a thing on about Dracula. <laughs> right. <laughs> what, Dracula? And I found a flaw in it. Go on. Uh, not, not the fact that he's the living dead and he's- No. Nope. drinks blood to stay alive and he doesn't reflect and he can in mirrors. Well, and you can- go on. The mirror thing, he can't look in mirrors, can he? Well, he can look in mirrors but he can't see himself in a mirror. Yeah. Right, that still doesn't work. Go, okay, on. go on. It doesn't work at all, Carl. It doesn't work go anyway. Go on. Well, Santa Parting's always really neat. His centre parting's always really How does he do it if he can't look in the mirror? <laughs> Bl blood on the floor or something it was called. Rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> I love the floor in the Dracula film is that his centre parting's too neat. How did he do it without a mirror? 
Oh. Was it a documentary about Dracula? No, yeah. it was- The it was, real Dracula. It was the real Dracula. Yeah, the real Dracula. <laughs> yeah, the real yeah. Dracula the it's true just story. a film, it, uh, Blood on the Floor or something it's called. Yeah. Yeah. Right. We had a little lunch yesterday, didn't we? We did indeed. That was a nightmare. Yeah. I hate going out with you two. Uh, I was explaining to Carl, right, I, I like to excite Carl's imagination, right, and, uh, um, if it involves chimps or monkeys, all the better. Um, brains he likes, parts of the body, deformity. You know, I know, I know where to, you know, what buttons to push. And, um, I told him about this thing, I don't know if, uh, uh, any of you out there, um, know about this, um, but there's the, an experiment they did in the, in the 50s, um, a, uh, a clinical psychology experiment where, uh, there's the two hemispheres of the brain, okay, they're joined by a thing called the corpus callosum, right, which is a, just a little f flap of skin, like a little scar lead that joins your two hemispheres. And what they did, they cut that in half, and they thought it was a cure for schizophrenia, but what it turned out to be, or epilepsy, I think, I can't remember, um, uh, was that your two sides of your brains didn't function together. You couldn't get information. I was telling Carl all this thing, and I, one of the things I told him was that they did it on a monkey, and it fought itself over a nut. Like, its right arm was connected, you know, by its left lobe of the brain, and it was fighting over itself. And Carl went, instead of, like, thinking this is an amazing experiment, he went, would it- would it have been happy if you'd given it two nuts? <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, you started off by explaining, and I remember you mentioned- because I, I was watching the two of you as you were describing it to me, you said, of course, one side of the brain deals with, uh, symbolism. And as you said the word symbolism, I noticed Carl drift away from looking at you, <laughs> pick up his mobile phone, <laughs> and start pressing buttons randomly. <laughs> And I- I thought it was the word symbolism that got him, and I noticed you took you just a moment longer, and I think the first thing you said was, when did I lose you? Yeah, I knew I'd lost him. It's extraordinary- and he doesn't even try I to disguise it. I think I said at one point as well. Right, yeah. And I- I knew I was dicing with death there. Yeah. But, yeah. um, uh, did, but I told you- you tried to look it up, didn't you, on the- on the web, you didn't find anything about yeah, it, the Jeff? spelling- the spelling of it's- what- what is it again? What's the word? Corpus callosum. Yeah, I was, I was, I couldn't put- couldn't do it. Couldn't no, it's a point. Yeah. Don't bother. Give up. Don't bother. Give up. Um, so any, if anyone knows any interesting facts about that, that, uh, I don't but yours hasn't been cut in half, has it, Carl? <laughs> that would, again, what explains it. I'll tell you what we will be talking about later. I don't know if you're- you, if you're sort of aware of them, Steve. Go on. Bonobos. Oh, I, told I don't him know about, much about bonobos. I told really? him about them. Um, he was looking for stuff. I said, put in bonobo. He was having no luck with chimp. Um, and they're, uh, they're a, they're a form of chimpanzee, but, um, they're- they're even closer to us. Evolutionally speaking, they've got their social- um, groups are more like ours, they're- they're more intelligent. And he was loving it, weren't you? So is it- is it human bonobo Carl? <laughs> is yeah, that how it works yeah, on the yeah. evolutionary no, ladder? chimp Carl. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> talking about him, so yeah. we're talking about bonobos, you're excited about that? Yeah, That's yeah. Uh, coming up in, uh, monkey news? Um, uh, no, I think it's a bit of a monkey bonus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was great. <laughs> that was very, very funny. What indeed. a wonderful clip that was. I enjoyed it. Do you remember it. that? I, yeah. yeah. Well, it was in a, couple, a few weeks ago, wasn't <laughs> it? Really? I mean, I think it was last week. We'd have to have very, very bad memories mm. not to remember that mm. hilarious clip. I'd like to hear that again maybe in a couple of weeks' time when I'm away. <laughs> yes, absolutely. I, it's, it's embarrassing, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And we, you know, but the, you know, the good thing is, uh, on telly, I feel a bit guilty about putting out shoddy rubbish because I'm getting paid an awful lot. <laughs> yes. But here, you know, I, I don't give a sh They can bleep that. They will do. They will do. Bit of David Bowie. Uh, when's that ever at anyone, Steve? Never. Lady Stardust of Ziggy Stardust and the Spiders from Mars on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant. Carl Pilkington is in the middle of educating me. Colon, then. Educate me. Did I tell you the time when, uh, the doctor said, uh, I was gonna die? All right, keep talking. Right, ages ago, um, must have been about fifteen, right? And, uh, at lunchtime there was this- we used to have a choice of stuff to do at lunchtime, right? We used to have, um, like a- like a burger place that had an arcade machine in it, right? So we used to go there and play on that and have a burger, or- there was this baker's, right, that my mum worked at, and, uh, did great cakes and stuff, right? So, um, she used to, like, bring some home and that, but she couldn't always bring them home every night because, you know, they, they'd cost money and she used to get them for free. And they used to say they'd rather chuck them away than give them to the staff because there's a chance that the cream might be off. Right. Right, so they used to chuck them round the back. So I used to go round the back with my mate, and eat a load. Brilliant. So yeah. Scavenge, eating out of bins. <laughs> no, it was really- it wasn't out of bins, they were still in trays, but they just stacked them up near the bins, right? So this got out- I mean, it used to be chocker. 
Uh, once the school found out, everybody used to go there and it'd be like, well, <laughs> have a cake. <laughs> <Best> master crawling <laughs> through, <laughs> fighting the kids off. <laughs> Right, so <laughs> I'd have, uh, uh, you know, you just eat, I don't know, six jam donuts or something, and then you'd spend your dinner money on the arcade machine. Brilliant. Right? So it was a good, good afternoon, really, right? So you'd do that, and this one day I must have had six or seven, uh, jam donuts, a few Congress tarts. <laughs> uh, <laughs> What's a Congress tart? Just, I love them, it's me, I can't get them in London, right? So I'd have some <laughs> of them. Uh, and uh, if anyone maybe... can get a Congress tart, um, for Carl in London, please let him know. So anyway, this day, that, that was just a normal day, do you know what I mean? You'd just, once, yeah. twice a week, you'd have a load of cake. <laughs> in your life, yeah. Yeah, so a normal anyway. day in your life. Uh, were, were the frog boys there with the, with the <laughs> webbed hands and the big heads? So... And the horse in the settee, uh, yeah. But the day after, one of these days, I had really bad cramp in my belly. Right? Okay. I was like, in agony, could yeah. hardly walk, so I said to my mum, oh... You <laughs> could hardly stagger to the free cake. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, I was in absolute agony. I said, I think, I don't like doctors, but you'll have to get a doctor in because I don't know what it is, I can't walk. He gets the doctor around, uh, I won't say his name, but he said, uh, he said, well, doesn't look like he's got long left. Blimey. So I was a bit like, hang on a minute, I've only had a few cream donuts. Yeah. My mum was panicking. Sure. He went, my dad came in from work, she said, oh, something's really bad with Carl, I think it's serious, it's, you know, the doctors only ain't got long left. So he said, what, he said that and just left? So she said, yeah. He said, I'll have to call him then. So he called him up, said, uh, what's all this about, you know, Carl hasn't got long left, how long's he got? So he goes, oh, I was only messing. He's just got, he's just had some bad cream. <laughs> Can you believe that? <laughs> well, the thing is... <laughs> I um, like the fact your mum didn't ask any questions. I know. <laughs> she didn't yeah, go into detail. Know, no, no, well, I, can I, you I, explain I, more, Doctor? No, I got a shoe off. I, yeah, but uh, she doesn't. She I, doesn't no, like no, talking. I'm, you know, I don't want to diss you or your family, but I imagine if I was there, I'd have known the Doctor was joking. <laughs> yeah. That's all I'm saying. I mean, I, 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 I sound very arrogant there, but I imagine he went, what's he done? I had about six cream grounds. Oh, right. Oh, wow. Uh, he hasn't got long to live then. I'll see you later. <laughs> yeah. That's what I think the Doctor did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just love the idea your mum just let him go. Yeah. Terrified, thinking, well, yeah. I'm not gonna probe him, he sees, that's it then. Dad comes in, hi honey, I'm home. Anything happened? Uh, the doctor said Carl's gonna die and then left. <laughs> Did he? I'll call him. <laughs> but anyway, that's why, uh, these sort of things fascinate me. So, right. we'll move on to this next one, right, which is brilliant. Go Dead on, short then. story, so, right, uh, old woman, <laughs> about seventy years old. Yeah. Uh, she's normally fit and healthy and stuff, nothing wrong with her, she's having a good life. And, uh, one day, she goes for a check to the doctors, yeah. just to check herself out, cause she's yeah. getting on a bit. Yeah. Uh, says, take your clothes off and that. So, she does. And, uh, checks her out, says, yeah, you're looking good, you're looking good. Uh, turn round. Uh, he said, oh god. He says, you got, uh, a tumour on your buttock. Right? So she goes, oh. What, can you do anything to sort it out? So they go, yeah, 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 we could book you in for an operation, it's best if we remove this. Books are in for an operation, operation day comes, strip her down and that, they're all stood round, the doctors, start to operate, it only turns out it's a pork chop that she sat on five years earlier and it had stuck to her buttock. Right, Carl. <laughs> I right, can sold you. I'm, I'm not, honest. Right. I'm, no, I'm, listen. Okay, no, I'm, serious. Me, okay, Carl. I'll tell you now. I'm leaving. I'm no. never. I'm never doing this show again. No, I'm serious. Honestly, You're talking, I, I, I've never had a, such. What do you mean? You couldn't believe it? No. When I read it, I said, "I've got to uh, tell Ricky this that." This woman had a pork chop stuck to her ass for five years. You mental case. <laughs> of course she didn't. That is a blinding record. And before that, Rick, what do you make of those adverts? They were great, weren't they? I like them. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm going to buy all them products on the way home. And that's endorsed by Ricky Gervais. He's won awards. Yeah. Rick, do you remember this? This was a hilarious. No. Movie. No, you remember this. When you wore it, uh, it was when Carl said something that was basic. Well, I think for a lot of people, it sounded like a lot of old bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> what have we got now? Right, so we, we look into animals that we get rid of. I've spoken to someone about snails, I've spoke to someone about jellyfish, and that, and, uh, looking at cockroaches today. She is an expert, she's just not, not just some random person. No, she works in a museum, where, a good museum, I said I'd give it a plug. It's the one near Knightsbridge, it's got dinosaurs and that in it, it's worth seeing. Well, and that's your museum? Yeah. So, uh... He's <laughs> not sure. He's <laughs> <laughs> not sure. <laughs> this is Go what on. happened. <laughs> Now, what 
I'll do, I'll tell you as much as, as I know and then you can fill me in if I'm right or wrong and then at the end of it we'll get to the bottom of whether we need them or not. Okay. Alright, so, uh, first of all, uh, the first thing that, that, I, that I found out is that, um, that they have eight, 18 knees. Uh, that's not exactly possible. They're insects, so they have six legs. Yeah. And a knee is usually the junction between femur and tibia, that sort of classic human knee is and every other animal knee, so with six legs you can only have six knees. Uh, could somebody sort of got mistaken for seeing one that was a bit double jointed? Uh, I think you're grasping at straws or something. Alright, well, uh, well, we might have to come back to that one then. Okay. Um, they can hold the breath for 40 minutes. Well, they don't do that because they don't breathe in the same way as us. They breathe through little spiracles, holes down the, the side of the body, so... Um, no, if they're not a very apt simile because the, the method of breathing is so different. What do you mean? Because insects have a, a totally different system. They don't have lungs in the way that we do, and just breathing through one part of the body. They're, they're actually breathing through every segment of the body all of the time. So even though they've got their mouth shut, they might be able their to fly? Have nothing to do with breathing. So Only just feeding. So, you see, maybe that's where someone's gone wrong. Someone's got hold of one and sort of taped its mouth up or something and so got bored after 40 <laughs> minutes and said, well, we'll call it right. That's a unkind thing to do to an insect, even to a cockroach. Yeah, but it's all... You can't do that. Yeah, but... No. Pretty unkind thing to do anything, to anything, even a cockroach. Something else I found out. Yeah. They can live for a week without an head. Well, that's true if they don't bleep to death in the process. But the weird thing is, when I told you that they had 18 knees, you seemed a bit sort of, like, don't, don't talk ridiculous. But yeah. then we're talking about an animal that can live without an head. Uh, so, so there's a little bit of truth in that one, yeah? Yes. Yeah. Why, when it was invented, has it got that facility? Say if someone said to humans, we could do that with humans, and, you know, if you lose your head in some accident, it gives you a bit of time to sort of go back to your, f to your family and maybe write them, write them a note. You won't be able to have a chat, but write them a note saying, it was my own fault and uh, it was nice knowing you. Oh, well, that uh, would be a useful facility, I agree, but cockroaches are great survivors. I mean, they've been around for over 300 million years. They're one of the most primitive insects. Right. Well, I've also, um, is it true that they do a lot of resting? Apparently they can sort of rest for 75% of the time. Rest? Yeah, they just, just sit about doing nothing. It's probably true of a, a vast proportion of, of the world's fauna. Well, I mean, not... maybe maybe the 25% uh, percent that they are working, they're really giving it some, so and it might make probably up. they're searching out food and, uh, yeah, they can slow down considerably. You can chill insects in the fridge and they'll become very, very quiet. You might think they're dead. Yeah, but, but I'm sure, you know, if, if we were sat in a fridge, you know, we'd go a bit quiet, wouldn't we, you know? Well, uh, you might not know much about it, of course. Yeah, but... I'm not quite reading the, the right sources. Well, I've been using the internet. I'm sure there are many useful sources that you could find there, but some of those seem to have been a little um, misleading to you. So, so you don't agree with, with a lot of what I've told you there? No. So, cockroaches, can we get rid of them? No. So we're keeping them, then? I would say so, yes. <laughs> I think we should get her on more often because she sounds like she'd be a bit of an ally, really. Because she knew immediately that you were talking nonsense. She even said, I think you should be more concerned about your sources, which I've been trying to tell you for a year, right? The fact, I mean, I mean, 18 knees, where did you get that from? It's, uh, it's on the uh, internet. Uh, they can hold their breath for 40 minutes. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what, I don't know what you read and take on. Mad world, don't it? <laughs> <laughs> but if you've just tuned in, it's XFM 104.9, you've got that bit right. Ricky Gervais, shoe with me, Stephen Merchant. Hello there. Carl is actually in a little booth. We're not in the studio, you see. We're, this is pre-recorded. We recorded this last week because we're away. And it's sort of like the best of 
best of the last three weeks since last time we were away when we put out the best of. Okay, what's the next yeah. one? What's the ne educating well, wiki? I don't know. Uh, see, like I say, I was lo looking around and this stuff that is interesting. Right, I was looking on the web. But, but there's no point. Well, it's just that I found one about. Um, what's the point? About a lad who uh, eight years old, yeah. but he's still breastfed. <laughs> <laughs> now I don't know if you can get anything out of that. <laughs> Is that what his mum said? <laughs> 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 what do you mean I don't know if I can get anything out of that? You don't need to. No, it's, it's just that. You know, Where did you read that? That was on the internet. Oh. oh. Well, yeah. Um, You're always unspec unspecific when you mention it. It's just it was on the internet. Well, yeah. I'm trying to think what I put in. I think I put in Y to see if I'd confuse the computer. Ah! <laughs> 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 Go! Then, you are... No, I did, I did, yeah, no honestly. I, I did a search, put in Y, and I ca he came <laughs> up with funny things that, like, why d is this person doing that? Why is that? And it had a picture of this eight-year-old lad, sort of, you know, <laughs> on his mum's nipple. And, um, it was saying, you know, oh, is, is, is this healthy? <laughs> Ooh. Mm. Are you sure that wasn't asking you that question? <laughs> uh, what, you, I put in why? Just, Just to confuse, confuse the, the computer. computer. <laughs> like, we were going, what do you mean? Yeah. Stop it. Yeah. Oh, look, but, yeah, uh, last week uh, I was walking, um, uh, home with him and I went, uh, I got a, he was saying something stupid and I went, I've got a competition for next week, let's do a phone in and it's called Carl Pilkington, genius or fool, Yeah, right? And he went, no, no. I went, why not? He went, well, uh, it'd be confusing because they say there's no difference between genius and being a fool. <laughs> Do they, don't they? No, <laughs> that's, no, 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 but it, it's rubbish and people say there's a fine line between madness and genius and, uh, you know, it's a ridiculous soundbite. Uh, they don't say there's a fine line between a genius and an idiot. Well, the people who do are idiots. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So what, what would you do there, though, just to sort of wrap that little thing up? What would you do? That lad loves his mum's, his mum's milk. What are you what are you asking me to come up with? <laughs> no, I'm a just- A title <laughs> for the, the story- No, 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 it's what? just, it's just what would you do? Right. What I do you mean, what would I do? Well, it's causing a bit of a problem in the area, right? <laughs> what area? In, in America, I think it was. Oh, America, a problem, are they? George Bush is worried about this kid well, who's no, breastfeeding right. at eight. Imagine it like this, right? Right. But, so, Carl, what are you asking me about this spurious story you saw on the internet? I saw on the internet, there's yeah. an eight-year-old lad, he likes his mum's milk, yeah. and it's saying, is this right? Should it no, be No, it's not. There? But what, 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 <laughs> what do you want Ricky to do about it? It's not his responsibility. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, but, but the little town that he lives in, they're all yeah. causing an uproar, right? <laughs> Going, this isn't right, you know, no. I can't let my kid play out in case he's in the garden with his mum getting a bit hungry, right? <laughs> yeah. So, oh, God. what should they do? Because his mum's saying, well, he likes it. Yeah. And he, you know, what, so what do you do? I don't know the laws. <laughs> No, but I'm not asking you to sort out the laws. I'm just saying, if you lived in that neighbourhood, what yeah. would you say? If you went up to him and said, "Look, everyone's getting a bit fed up with this." Look. I'd say, what, 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 what would I do? What do you mean? What would I do? <laughs> what, what are you asking me? <laughs> right, it doesn't matter. No, 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 no. What are you asking me? What are you asking me and Steve and well, the I'm public? I'm just saying. Say if you live next door to this woman. Yeah. Right. The kid's hungry. Eight years old. He's out playing on his bike and he goes, Mum, I'm getting a bit peckish and he goes, All right, son. She whops one out <laughs> Um and he starts having his having his milk, right? <laughs> you live you live next door, you're putting your washing out and you see this going on. <laughs> you're getting a bit sick of it because it's gone on for months. <laughs> Eight so, years, I see. Why is it your business? Just why are you me... why are you such a nosy neighbour that you're concerned? What would you do, Carl? Let's turn it back on him. Yeah. What would you do? What's your solution? What would you do? Well, I thought I'd say, right, why are you doing this? And she'd say, um, because he likes it. And I'd go, all right then, put it in a bowl first. <laughs> Genius! Oh. And you think that would sort that out? No, because uh, I was thinking about the whole thing, right, and you do that when you're a baby and everything's all right, innit? Yeah. yeah. No one bats an eyelid at sure. a little baby having, having a bit of milk from its mum's no. breast, right? Yeah. You'd almost say it was natural. But you grow out of it. <laughs> it's like, you don't see, it got me thinking about things you don't see, and you don't see- <laughs> Did you put this into a computer? Show me things you don't see. What else no. don't you see? Well, you don't see, like, an old man having a Twix. <laughs> <laughs> you never- <laughs> 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 
So what? Uh, <laughs> You know, you know the terrible thing about all this, Steve, is he's right. You don't see it on No, no, that's a but, terrible but, thing. So what they have got, right, they've made old man's office, haven't they? They've come up with all <laughs> is, is that a song? Oh, oh, God, you don't see it on <laughs> So they've got their worthers, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> You Forget think you're it. giving a lecture Forget at Oxford? It's, it's not going anywhere. No, yet. go on, sorry. Go on. I'm what? just saying. Right. You grow out of things. Yeah. And the old man, I'm sure when he was a kid, he'd have a twit. <laughs> yeah. And now it doesn't look right, so he's having <laughs> It doesn't look right! So. Right. I don't think Werther's originals were specially designed for old people. I think they were sweets that just happened to have been made for years. Mm. That's why old people eat them. Yeah. They didn't go, hang on, there's a market here. I've <laughs> noticed old people aren't eating Twixes. Quick, let's make some yeah. old man sweets. But the, the, the little yeah, advert, yeah. he gives it to his grandson as well, doesn't he? He goes, I have a Werther's original. No, I so think it, it cuts though before he throws it back in his face and goes, <laughs> get, get me a Twix. Yeah. <laughs> XFM 104.9, we're not here. Um, oh, it is a bit like being Dennis Norden, playing some great, uh, great moments from the show. I, I was just imagining Dennis Norden one day, sort of just like waking up out of his stupor, he's doing this, he'd go, and he'd go into the producer and go, I've just seen a couple of my programmes. I just saw it'll be right on the night 18. It's sh**. It is why, terrible. Why didn't someone tell me? Well, we th we didn't want to upset you because, uh, you know. But I've been doing it way too long. Were well, you going to just let me go on forever? Well, until you died, yeah. Well, why can't my son take over? Well, he's 80, Dennis. <laughs> and the jokes I'm doing, they're awful. They're just, why have I got that clipboard? I, I've written these jokes, they're not funny. There's an audience, they're laughing. What are they laughing They're not at? laughing, they're not, they're not laughing. That's clam laughter. Who are those audience? Who, who goes to an audience for It'll Be Right on the Night? A lot of them are older than you. It can't be right. You know, we have 15% fatality in one of your audiences. <laughs> But I went I went home at Christmas, I watched one of the episodes, yeah. which was with my family and friends, I said, watch this, you'll love it. Stony face, no one laughed, they all thought it was sh**, well it is sh**. Well why didn't you tell me earlier? We didn't want to hurt your feelings, you're an old man. You may be upward of 102. <laughs> I didn't realise. Yeah. Here's a, a problem that someone's emailed in. Yeah. We're taking uh, emails today, if you've got a problem, a concern, um, or you know, just a general query that you think Carl could answer for you. It could be about anything, it could be about some of the big kind of philosophical questions. Yeah. Um, it could be uh, you know, something to do with war or famine, anything like that. Or it could just be a personal dilemma, you know, something that's happening locally. Anyway, this seems one that I think you probably have you and your father have probably come across this sort of dilemma in the past. Yeah. And I'd be interested to know what your take is on it. Uh, let me see, this is from Lee Matthews by the look of it. He says, he lives in a suburban area where the local teenagers uh, also live on the same road and they're running riot. They're smashing wing mirrors off the cars, they're crashing into park cars on their skateboards, and they're just generally making hay mayhem, you know, night and day. Uh, what can he do to stop this going on? Uh, the parents of the kids don't seem to give a damn. Anyone who complains to them, they just say, I'll oh, piss off. You know, the police are useless because they never catch them in the actual act of violence which is what they got to do to, uh, apparently convict them. So, uh, they, they don't know who to turn to, really. Can't it's rather like when a, a little old a lady problem. went and got the A-team, you know. The it's a, it's a, you know, and he was dressed as an elderly Chinaman. Exactly. But she knew, she knew who he was. Colonel Decker didn't have a clue. Yeah. You see, it's weird, cos now, now it has got out of hand. Do sure. you know what I mean? Like, years ago when I was growing up on the estate, um, yeah, you had problems, but not like you have now. Do you no. know what I mean? Mm. Um, you know, Stammers were nice as well, weren't they? <laughs> well, right, and- Police are getting shorter, aren't you? But you yourself kind of admitted in the past that you were something of a tearaway. Didn't, you didn't do anything yeah, like never, these kids I here, I mean, the but thing is, I was- I was scared that if I got caught doing it, my dad would go mad. Yes. And I remember smashing a car window by accident and legging it in the lounge and sort of pretending to go asleep on the settee. Right? <laughs> Genius. And I heard a knock at the door. He chloroformed himself. <laughs> yeah. Just to be unconscious when his dad came home. And there was a knock on the door, and I thought, <laughs> oh god, this is a fella who saw me. I was chucking a stone in the air, seeing how high I could throw it. <laughs> of course and you he, were. He came Did he keep landing on your head? <laughs> <laughs> that would explain a lot. <laughs> and, uh, it, it came down. Chucking a, a stone in the air, <laughs> love it! To see how far it's I could throw brilliant. it. brilliant. So, you know, uh, I wasn't bothering anyone. Did you invent that, that game? <laughs> right, did so you get anyway. the stone for your birthday? <laughs> 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 go and play with your stone. <laughs> he gave one to Suzanne. <laughs> Carl, go and play with your stone. <laughs> <laughs> no, the thing is, right, and it came down at a fun funny angle. And it ate, of course it did. It ate the back of this, uh car and the, and the back window is the most expensive because it has that heating thing in it yeah, in case yeah. you got a frosty window. Yeah. So I thought, oh god. <laughs> so I legged it in, got on the settee, went to sleep, knocked at the door. <laughs> Genius. It's a brilliant plan. It's a brilliant plan. I couldn't be guilty, I'm asleep. So, so <laughs> I love the idea. 
So uh, the thing is, our lounge used to sort of you could you could see in from the door, right? So this family who uh, <laughs> have saw you saw me do it. Le saw me asleep on the settee and my mum said, go and get the door. And I sort of went, oh, as if I'd been asleep. Yeah. I went to the door, like, rubbing my eyes, and, uh, the fella said, what did you run off for? I saw you. I was like, oh, no. And I didn't see me dad. I went out. It was when he was working, sort of, evenings. So I went out so I didn't have to see me dad. And then the next day I came, I came home from school and my dad said, 45 quid. Oof. That's all he said. That's all he said. looked at me. And then you fell asleep when he went, wake up, wake up, you know what I said, no, <laughs> 45 quid, no, the thing Carl, right. he, he didn't have to do 45 anything. pounds, Carl, now I know you were saving up for a brick, <laughs> but you can't have it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just do it. So, yeah, well, equally, if you're doing a bigger crime, you know, like yeah. a bank job yeah. or a murder. Remember to take the stocking off your head, because they yeah. wake you up and go, why have you got a stocking on your head? Yeah. Just go, oh, I had a weird dream. <laughs> All right, uh, Okay, look, quick, um, query for you, this is from, uh, Jay, he's got a problem here. Um, he says, uh, my parents won't let me ditch my studies. He's currently reading modern languages at London University. Sure. He wants to follow his dream, but his parents won't let him, of being a dancer. Carl. Worse than that, he says that they're trying to arrange a marriage to a bunch of, uh, minging daughters of people they know from good families. He doesn't know what to do. She's got the arranged marriage coming along and he's also got, you know, he basically wants to, you know, wants to be a dancer. His parents are forcing him into, um, something more practical. Well, the first thing, right, I don't think- Live the, your dreams? The arranged marriage thing is such a bad idea. Okay. Because I think too many people go on looks, right? And then you soon get bored of that, mm -hmm. and you find out the person who you're knocking about with is actually not your type. Right. Why don't you arrange marriages for people? Well, uh, I'm just saying, right? So I'd say, uh, Jay, go along with that. I wouldn't worry about it. Okay. I mean, if they're really ugly, then you know, don't go along with it. But if they're half bad, yeah, put up with it. That's sure. right. The dancing, brilliant. Right. <laughs> That's that solved. Brilliant. I like to be a dancer. <laughs> <laughs> After I did the boxing, right, I joined, uh, joined a dancing thing just near, um, Man United's ground, right, called Twiggies. Right. Um, <laughs> went it? along, I wanted to learn some moves. How old were you? Well, it was when Michael Jackson was, like, pretty big, so, about 80, 83, 84, 85, oh, yeah. something like that, around there. Um, wanted to do it, um, when I went, it was shut and it had become like a warehouse for a toilet rolls. So in a way, I wonder what would have happened. Sorry, sorry, how is that an anecdote about you going through <laughs> dancing? Well, You've I'm told me before, you what, you did boxing for a while, you did dancing for a while, you had a true fight in the boxing, you didn't <laughs> even get in the pl That's not an- you yeah, Imagine if that was a film! This is about um, a boy's dream of becoming a dancer. <laughs> oh, it's shut. Next on. I mean, you- How is that a story? Yeah, that was Billy Elliot. Do you think he would've won it? <laughs> he won quite as many awards. Yeah. Yeah, a brilliant. Footloose. Alright? <laughs> yeah. I'm fed up, they banned it. Let's go- Oh, it's shut. <laughs> um, do 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 yeah. Slash dance. First, there was- Oh, it's a warehouse. <laughs> Never mind. You. I'm, I'm just saying, you know, you'll find something else. I, I can't- I think I got a go-kart after that. <laughs> <laughs> I bought a motorised go-kart and kept myself busy with that. So, <laughs> <laughs> there's, always, there's always other just things. Just think, Alan Bennett has to sit down and really sweat over his stories. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So he just opens his mouth. You are a living Alan Bennett character. So that's oh, that. So that's, that's solved. Well, Jay, don't worry about that. There's, um, no emotional there, emotional problems, I can foresee, uh, if you follow that advice. So the advice there that. is do an arranged marriage. It, 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 if she's not, if she's not ugly. minging, yeah. she's not uh, completely minging. Yeah, uh, and don't worry about dancing. Get a go kart. Cheers. <laughs> This is XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Jamais with me, Stephen Merchant. Hello. Uh, you're listening to the best of basically Carl Pilkington. You don't talk to anyone, do you? In the week, you just hide in your little sound booth thing, and you really don't talk to anyone, do you? Much? Not really. No. no I mean, you you know, you might call up. Yeah. Uh, but now I keep myself to myself. Yeah. Then you don't get bogged down in the office politics and stuff. Yeah. Is there a lot of office politics here? I don't know. I don't get involved in it. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 Proved your point. So, so, so when, um, we're away and we're, like, out of action, who, who, other than Suzanne, who will you talk to of the day? How will you get a sort of, uh, uh, f feedback from the world? How will you get sort of, like, input and... I always, if I've ever, uh, if ever I've got, like, a, a question on anything, the internet's sat there and I can just go on online and find out. The internet I'm is, there. is good. It's brilliant. But it, it's not all verified. It's not all factually, necessarily factually accurate. Anyone can put things onto the internet. It's the, you know, that's it's, it's freaks and things that put on well, here's things one, right? like- Well, here's, here's one that I read in the week, right? One. <laughs> About this woman. Yeah. Uh, she was a bit of a punk. And, um, to get her hair done like she wanted it. Super glue. Right, now, 
she got lard. Apparently, it's a popular thing. You might, you might know. Um, put lard on your head. Yeah. And you put it in the oven. <laughs> now, apparently, the heat that you get from the oven is different from the sort of heat you get from an air dryer, right? And she had to do that to get the style that she wanted. But anyway, uh, she comes into the money or whatever, treats herself to a microwave. Right? It doesn't- it's not true, Carl. Opens the door, jams the things, you know, like the little catch, so- so the microwave works. She jams it with a screwdriver or a knife or something. Yeah. Puts the microwave on, sticks her head in, boils her brain. <laughs> Don't be ridiculous. Right? Well, why is that ridiculous? <laughs> boils her brain. She boiled her brain. <laughs> <laughs> she boiled- her brain. And this is what's good about the internet. I went straight from that and there was a subject about brains. And do you know that Russell Gr Crowe, when he dies, is is given his, his brain to charity or something. Some sort of... <laughs> some people who can do stuff right. with it. She gave hers to Pot Noodle. <laughs> <laughs> Vesta. Yeah. Oh, boiling sort of a stuff. skull. Yeah. That's, that's not true. No. It's not true, Carl. No. Just urban myths. Someone made it up. <laughs> yeah. For a laugh. They're, they're just too convenient, urban myths. Everyone to- uh, you can tell an urban myth not true, really because it's always, this happened to a mate of mine, and- and- the, and the, when you say what happened then, they go, don't know, that was it. Was it? Was that it? Was it? Someone boiled a brain and that was it. There was no <laughs> more story. Were there any dates, locations, have you, have times? A, I think it was in Belgium. There's that- there's that- there's that one- <laughs> 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 There's that one that a bloke, right, was gonna get a phone call at four o'clock to find out if his business was, you know, okay, right? And if- if he didn't get the phone call, he knew he was, um, broke, destitute. So, uh, uh, uh dead on four o'clock, the phone didn't ring, so he went up to the- the- the roof, his office, and he jumped off to commit suicide. And as he was passing his window, the phone was ringing. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Carl, it didn't happen. Didn't happen. Think it through. Think it through. Who- who- who told that story? Who told that story as he hit the pavement at 120 miles an hour? He's the only person who could have known those- that series of incidents. Also, why didn't and he- he's dead. As his life's at stake, why didn't he wait till five past? I said, I'm gonna give it five minutes just in <laughs> just case. in case the lines I, are busy. Yeah. And this- and what sort of- what sort of bloke goes out, uh, I'll call you at four, okay, if your business- well, call me anyway. No, no. If I don't call exactly four, then, uh, no, you yeah. could commit suicide. <laughs> commit suicide? <laughs> I would, because if I don't call at four, uh, that's the end of it. Well, call me anyway. No, that's not the way I work. <laughs> why can't you just call me and tell me the other way? Well, I'm telling you I would do it. <laughs> if you're bust, I don't call. Can't you just call to verify in case someone goes wrong? What if he's engaged? He won't be engaged. <laughs> just commit suicide at four, please. <laughs> it it didn't happen, Carl. Have you the other one, right? A bloke, right? Uh, he's he's on a uh, train station, and uh, uh, I say oh, I heard it. Um, uh, he's uh, uh, he's waiting for a uh, crew station, waiting for, and um, he shits himself. Uh, as you do. <laughs> and so he goes, oh, my train's in five minutes, I need- So he runs across to Millet's and goes, quick, Levi's, 36. The bloke just puts it in a bag, he runs onto the train, uh, he goes into the- the toilet, takes his, uh, um, trousers and pants off. His soiled trousers yes. and pants. Yes. Throws them out of the window, I won't be needing those again. Cleans himself off, open the bags, it's a jacket! Oh. No, it didn't happen, didn't Carl! Happen, Carl. At what point did he go into it and go, go, quick, Levi's 36, and the bloke went, sorry, Levi's 36, what, a pair? No, 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 shall I wrap them? Them? It. It. Shall I wrap? <laughs> Just wrap whatever it is. Do you want to look? No. Do, I'm not looking when you're putting it in the bag, please. Right? <laughs> Uh, well, 36 mm. white stories, uh, well, no, don't say anything. <laughs> I've told you 36 Levi's. <laughs> don't put <laughs> yes. it in a bag yeah. and charge me for it. Yeah. I oh. don't want to discuss it further. Yeah. There was one, um... There we go. There was one about a woman whose yeah. husband died, <laughs> and she had him cremated, yeah. and made, uh, made like a little egg timer out of him. Mm. And she said, I did that, so it can still help around the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> well, that might be true. That might be a joke. <laughs> That's quite sweet. That no, might be that true. It's true story, again. It was all... No, not again, because the ones I just told weren't. Nor is the boiling the brains in a bag, curry, microwave. <laughs> Head story, true. Yeah. That's all. Um, I'd like to play a beautiful song now by Cat Stevens called <coughs> Lily White. It's, it, it's lovely. A song for the lovers? Yeah. Big sound.
Beautiful day. You too. To kick off the show, Steve. Absolutely. The Ricky Gervais show with Steve Merchant. Hello there. And Claire Sturgis. Oh, hello, boys. Carl's ill. Well, he's not here. I, I mean, I never believe people when they're ill. I think no. they're always malingering. I never t take any days off work. I just think you can drag yourself in unless it's unless it's life threatening well, or. To, to be fair, Rick, can I just stop you there? Um, it's yeah. not so much that you take days off as you'll just suddenly decide around lunchtime that you've overeaten and yeah. you need to go and lie down. But I'm my own with boss. With a cold compress. <laughs> yeah, but I'm my own masseuse. <laughs> I'm my own boss. Yeah. <laughs> so it's not so much you take days off. It's not so much you take days off as you never actually do a full day's work. <laughs> yeah. You actually exactly. prevent that. I, nev well. I never take. Take that hour and a half off a day. <laughs> exactly. Um, XFM 104.9. So what's the story, Claire? Do you know anything about Carl? Do you know what his, his no, illness is? No, I, I think he's got this, uh, this sort of cold virus that's uh -huh. going around. He phoned me yesterday. He did sound poorly in mm. his defence. Poorly. A bit croaky. Well, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. He I'm coughed not, a bit. I'm not being funny. He better be in hospital. To, to miss take, this show. To definitely. miss this show. Flagship show of the week on XFM. Do you know, you are right, because, uh, and you've been away, haven't you? you know, been away two you. weeks. We had the best yeah. off again. But let's part of the best of. Yeah. Let's part of the best of the last two weeks, yeah. shall we? Yeah. I mean, I, I, we're going to try and get him on the phone. We're going to phone him and, uh, and, and I want him to really explain himself because, you know, I think he's malingering, to be honest. Well, so. he phoned me in the week and he said, uh, Steve, don't forget there's a documentary on on Friday night about Oliver the Humanzi, the yeah. human monkey. He yeah. said, he said to me, it's gonna be brilliant. And it wasn't. And it wasn't brilliant. It was- I've, I've, I've especially stayed in and watched it. I, I taped it and watched it afterwards and I've never seen so much hype and desperation. They kept showing the same clip of this, definitely this chimpanzee yeah. that- that walked upright like a lot of chimps can. <laughs> exactly. Right? Yeah. Um, it uh, lost its hair, so it was half human because all humans are bald. Yeah. yeah. So that's the half human bit. It didn't have hair. I'm sorry, humans do have hair on their heads. Yes. The other thing was this this desperation to go. Could it be half chimp? No. It's a chimp that superficially looks less like a chimp than other chimps. Um, yeah. So, uh, Lee Evans looks a bit like a chimp. Is he half chimp, <laughs> half human? Yeah, yeah. No, he's a human who looks a bit like a chimp. That's yeah. libelous. Yeah. That's a bit insulting, isn't it? Should we just play some music? Yeah, I'm really okay. sorry about that. I'll oh. get back to you on that. Yes. Tick tock, that's Coldplay and Clocks <laughs> on XFM 104.9. Can, can I tell you a Coldplay coming yep. in a couple of weeks' time to a co host Zoe Ball show? Right, one, don't ever interrupt me. Two, don't. Tell them about other people's shows. No. Okay, moving on. Thank Please you. Please do not mention that there are any other television celebrities on yeah. this channel, on this yeah. station. Sorry. We are trying to convince people it's only Ricky. But the interruption was the main thing. Sorry. Um, Sorry. Well, we can't get older Carl, right? We looked, he's got his ho uh, old number out there. Uh, uh, well, his home number. Yeah, it's a hold on, alright. So, uh, we went to the new records. He hasn't even given him this, this new home number. So, something's funny going on. He doesn't want to be contacted. He hasn't given me his home number. I've tracked down a friend who's looking at it for us. That phone might ring any moment. I apologise for that. But why is Carl not available? It's interesting that neither you or I, and I like to think of ourselves as being fairly close friends of Carl. Yeah. We have made him the man he is today. We cannot yeah. get in touch with him. In, we the, same way, in the same way that that bloke bought Oliver. Sure. I think that Carl is now ours. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Exactly. Well, he, yeah, exactly. I think very much that's true, yeah. Yeah. Carl is very much like a if human we, Z. If we look, we're, we're, we're gonna lose contact with him and find him five years in a circus in Manchester. Exactly. They're doing experiments on him. Yeah, yeah. And they're going, we, we can't figure him out. Yeah. Well, he's, there's something wrong he with He looks like a human, he, but he, it, he acts like a, cause usually humans stand up right. Yeah. And Carl likes to walk on all fours whenever he can. Yeah. It's he's not interested in other human women, he's only interested in apes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It doesn't make sense. <gasps> oh my god. And he's bald. He is yeah. bald. Oh look, this, there's as much evidence and for Carl being a human Z as Oliver. Yeah. I think there's more. I think there's more. And, oh. Well, Carl barely walks up, right? I know. Scared of fire. <laughs> yeah. I know. It, it's, it is interesting, isn't it? Oliver was built, wasn't he? Yeah. I, see, I, 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 I don't know. Was, yeah, why were you was... looking, Rick? I'm interested to... I'm interested that you, you, I couldn't, what, what, your eyes were kind of uncontrollably, uh, drawn Steve, towards his- there. No, no, I didn't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> I was just looking at his face. No, I, uh, oh. I Sorry, Rick, but if there's no. something you want to <sighs> get off your chest. Yeah, and that's, that was the human part of it then, was it? Being built like that? Cause yeah. Cause humans are, but- Yeah. Although Carl's is very tiny and hidden behind. <laughs> and he's got, I've noticed some else as well. He's got a big red ass. That's true. Hasn't he? Yeah. Yeah, it's all beginning to slot into place. That's- And I've seen him climb up a, a cabinet and eat a banana as yeah. well. Just to- Yeah. Have a lunch And time. peel it with his toes. 
It's all coming together. Yeah. Right, we're gonna track him down, cos I, I, he's malingering, he's definitely malingering. Yeah. I'll tell you what, he's, he's at home now, in the garden, swinging on his tyre. He's <laughs> not ill. <laughs> I think more truthfully, someone said to me, uh, that I said, uh, Carl might be ill, they said, right, are you not gonna do the radio show then? Well, that's what annoys me. I mean, that's the biggest but, problem, is that, yeah. let's be honest, we haven't got anything without All Carl. we've got is the hook. People are staying listening, cos eventually they think we might get through to him at home, yeah. and there'd be fun on this show to be had. If we don't get in touch with Carl, I think we may as well just shoot off and leave Claire to do the show. I've got own. some great music. Is that not a- Well, it's a, a, it's a small, small You could leave uh, the music with me. I could just play it. There's not really music. That is true, isn't it? To be, uh, okay, well, play some great music yeah, now, play Steve. Play great tune. Okay, sure. wedding presents, do you Yeah, I'll explain what it is afterwards. Just play it. It's a joy. There's a monkey, there's a monkey theme. There is a monkey theme. There is a monkey connection. Call in if you know the answer. Doing their cover version of Pleasant Valley Sunday. That's from sure. this new uh, compilation of those. Uh, remember, they brought out a load of seven inches. Of course, in I, do. Of course I do. Of course one I do. <laughs> what a, what a my month. It was my favourite day. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, and, uh, oh. and on the B, B, do you remember on the B side of each one there was a cover of a different song? Steve, I even played the B side of each one <laughs> and listened to the song. <laughs> the <laughs> connection there that we're talking about was, of course, it was by the monkeys. Indeed. Yeah, yeah, Indeed. yeah. Brilliant. They, Brilliant. they turned up in yesterday's episode, didn't oh. they? I, a lot of people I'm sure won't have seen this documentary. It was on Channel 5 after all. Oh, so yeah. I always feel like we should uh, remind people that uh, what, what we're actually talking about. If we just happen to mention Oliver, a lot of people don't know what that means. Yeah. Um, if we explain that it is the uh, primate version of Carl, yeah, that's exactly. That's a sort of shorthand, isn't it? Yeah, the half. Yeah, yeah. But it was they were on a Jap the, 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 the human Z. The human Z. He was on a, cha a Japanese uh, TV show. With uh, they were doing experiments on him to find out if he was half human, and the monkeys happened to be there. Yeah, Mickey Dolan saying, you know, I'm quite interested to find out because you know I'm a monkey. Oh, one of the brilliant. Monkeys. <laughs> it was Excellent. <laughs> it was wow. absolutely bizarre. Of course, we, um, we've been off jetting around the world, Claire. I don't know. I don't want to boast. I'm sure you don't no, want to boast I, either. Carl but, told um, me you'd been off, you know, off to the States. Yeah, that was the reason we weren't here the last couple of weeks that we went to, uh, Los business Angeles. Business or pleasure? It was a little bit of business, a little bit of pleasure. Mm. You know, I like to combine the two. Um, <laughs> and, uh, nice. It was, uh, we were, um, uh, meeting, uh, a, a company about doing the office for America. Um, yeah. Actually redoing it. Yeah, yeah not, not, redoing not with it with... or any of the cast, but no. with American actors. American actors too, yeah. But the thing so. was, they, they, they were flying us over, it was like the whole business class trip, you know, spending a little bit of money, and uh... Virgin Upper Class, actually. Virgin Upper Class. I'd excellent. like to nice. recommend excellent. that. Excellent. It's, excellent it's brilliant. Very good show. Definitely get free flights down. Easy. Yeah, definitely. Easy. Brilliant, yeah. Uh, Richard Branson, lovely bloke, and I love it's Jubilee brilliant. Bells. I don't, so well don't, I don't think he owns it anymore. Does he not? But he's still a lovely bloke. He's still a good What does he own? He must own something we can get. Oh, does he evolve with Virgin Records anymore? <sighs> Wouldn't have thought so. No, no, V2. Well, what does he do? V2. And Virgin V. What's that? Right. Virgin V's some Is that be phones? beauty products or Brilliant. something. Brilliant. What about what Virgin Underwear? Brilliant. Whatever yeah, yeah, give us some of that. Give us some of that, Branson. Give us some of that. But I was uh, going to New York before going on to Los Angeles, where all the news was just for a little, uh, just meet some friends over in New York. And, uh, it's amazing, because, uh, Virgin Business Class, they pick you up in a sort of chauffeur-driven car, they drive you down, there's no bot, you don't have to check in upper with class, all the wish- Upper class, upper class, it's like, for, yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's, you don't need to w sort of queue up with the great unwashed, no. with screaming kids, with ordinary people. Yeah. You yeah, know, basically, yeah, you, yeah. you get, you, they just send your information ahead to the airport, and you just drive through, a kind of drive through McDonald's-style check-in, they take your bag, they check your passport, Sport, boom, they drop you at the executive lounge where there are, I swear to God, lovely free plums. I had two lovely juicy free plums in the executive lounge. I haven't eaten plums for years. He forgets the bloke's name, but they had, <laughs> he had lovely juicy Ding free dog. plums, all right? That, that's the sort that of- That is why- That's the sort of wit that I am capable of. That I heard is why the word he is plum. flying first class <laughs> he meant, to America. He meant to a suck of fruit. I changed it, I transposed the whole thing so suddenly he was sucking on a man's testicles who he'd never met before. Exactly. <laughs> for money. Exactly. That's the sort of things I'm capable of. Which is of. only half true. <laughs> So he's used his there comedy was mind. no money involved. Right. That is why he was being jetted off to America to yeah. talk comedy. That is the kind of quality. But it was get. it was great. It was a really lovely flight. It was a lovely car, luxury car, and the the flight it was like the advert. I th they've got those beds that sort of just well, they're the seats reclined. Kind of reclined, so it's almost and you, can uh, you got anything you want as much. And I was sort of like I was falling asleep, and I sort of woke up, and uh, one of the heiresses was like covering me with a blanket. It was like the advert. <laughs> yeah, it, it was crazy. just brilliant. All the lights came down. Oh, and everyone comes around and says, "Do you want a massage during the flight?" 
You can have a uh, handshake. You can have as much drinks. Although you can't drink, you have a drink and then you fall asleep because yeah. it's so comfortable and they take the lights. So anyway, anyway it's brilliant. I can't believe my luck. So I'm driving down. <laughs> I get to the airport in my chauffeur-driven car. Right, I'm sat there. I'm phoning people. My mum and dad. You never believe what I'm off to. Just I'm just in the car. Just chauffeur-driven car. And I get to the airport and I, they, you just hand your passport through the window of this car to this little woman who comes over. And I'm just there. I'm just sort of buzzing the window down, handing it to her, buzzing it back up. Like I don't want to talk. Check the passport. Take my luggage. I don't want to discuss things. You know who I am. And she hands the passport back through the window. She says, it's expired. <laughs> <laughs> I went, you are? What do you, you mean? She went, it's expired. I thought, it, I said, it's business class. What can you do? Can you do anything? And she went, no, you, we can send you to America, but eight hours later, you'll have to just turn around and come back. They won't let you through immigration. And I was like, what can I do? I gotta go to Los Angeles and talk about, like, the office and that. And she said, uh, well, it's such you. So, um, the chauffeur-driven car drove me straight to the passport office down, uh, in sort of, uh, Victoria, which I have to you say- back into town. So I had to come back into town. I didn't get on a plane. I'm wearing my suit because I thought I'd wear the suit so I look like a real player. So I'm wearing I my suit- I love the fact that you wore a tracksuit because yeah, I well, thought I don't need to get upgraded. I'm first class. Exactly. I, 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 I was- I wanted to go on in my pants and slippers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, uh, you know, with- fact, wasn't that why she covered you with a blanket? <laughs> 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 but, uh, so they take me back down to, uh, the passport. <laughs> I don't know if you've had to go down and get your passport changed, but it, they treat you like you are an illegal immigrant, yeah, sneaking into the country. Yeah. I'm wearing a suit, I've got luggage, you know, I've cl I'm clearly a dignified kind of guy, that's obvious. I'm speaking with a certain eloquence, I've got certain powers. <laughs> I'd just be working on it in the car. Oh, right, okay. And, um, <laughs> and they just, and they said, you've got to come back that night. So I had to come back. I had to, I had to get my passport. It me. I had to buy a sandwich. I had enough change for the machine because it was not, a, it was an absolute nightmare. I ended up, I spent, I began the day in a chauffeur driven car on my way to Los Angeles to discuss business with, uh, Universal Television Pictures, and I spent, I ended the day on the tube, <laughs> in a suit, with my luggage, stood next to one of the posters advertising this radio show, <laughs> which was just embarrassing because people kept pointing and staring and laughing. He called me, called me, like, he said, Rick, I've really much, I'll go, go on, he went, I, my passport as well, I went, oh, so what are you gonna do? Uh, he went, he said, right, I quote, he went, I didn't know passports expired. Yeah. I went, what do you mean? I went, he went, well, your driving license doesn't. I went, what are you talking about? He said, how old do you have to be to know that? He said, <laughs> he said, when will I know all these things? Yeah. <laughs> that is. When will I know all Steve, these I things? I want to just come and hug you. But do you uh, know what I mean? Uh, did you know oh. that? Did you genuinely know that your passport expired? I did because um, my passport expired because she's alive. Years ago. And because she's I alive in it. the world. There is so <laughs> much <laughs> stuff that I don't know because I don't think I've reached a certain age yet. I remember you walking down the street once and you said there were some roadworks and you said oh, they're probably doing those roadworks because and it's exactly the end of the financial yeah, year and they've got to spend, they've got to spend, spend their money. Yeah. I thought, well, how do you know that information? Yeah, exactly. But yeah. I don't talk to cab driver. I mean, chauffeur driven cars. I put the little window up so they don't talk to me. How old are you? 28. Are you, old en are you old enough yet to help a, a long distance lorry driver back into a car park? Definitely not. Are oh, you an idiot? Play a record. And I'm also, I've, I'm not old enough yet to be able to say, uh, uh, can I have a pint of lager, please, chief? <laughs> in the pub. <laughs> I wonder when I get to that age. <laughs> no, you're a long way off. Yeah. Another classic there from Oasis, Supersonic on XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Claire Sturgis standing hello, in for, hello, yeah. for Carl. But where is Carl? Where is Carl? So we've failed to get in touch with him at home. Well, it, look, he Do doesn't want to be contacted. He's turned up every phone off. He hasn't given the XFM his new home phone number. He doesn't want to be contacted. I can't believe he's not listening. To be honest, so you think he's listening now? Yeah, he listened. He listened in Manchester. If he's not listening, he's out and about. Uh, I mean, has anyone spotted Carl? What's your message to him, Rick? If he's listening, uh, get, call up. Uh huh. Anything else? More sort of call um, up or you're fired. Okay. Any bad language you want to use? Obviously, you can't really. Swear I can't anybody. really say it. What sort of words? I mean, the f word. Would you say? I'd say the f word. I'd call him a um, a twat. Um, uh, would you use the p word? I'm thinking of prick. Prick. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely use that. Oh, not, right. not, on, not on air, but sure. I'd call him a what stupid about little prick. Would you, would you just say your tits? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Little, All right. little, you stupid little bag of tits, I'd yeah, say to yeah, him. Yeah, not, yeah. I mean, privately. What but, about the uh, MF word? Because that's pretty intense. That's pretty hardcore. <laughs> do, you never, think, do you think that this is not appropriate <laughs> now? Do you think he's, do you think that would be too, too extreme? I'm worried if I use that. And, no he was, and he was genuinely ill, sure. I'd feel, feel a, bit of a, a bit of a, a, a C word. A, a cop, sure. Yeah. No, cop. Um, yeah. Because I wasn't thinking about C word. I, I mean, um, I mean a male 
bird. Sure, because we've got into trouble with that before. Meaning penis, and we don't mean that. Yeah, we no. don't mean penis. Um, but if, if you do, if anyone out there, sorry, sorry about that, um, it was a discussion about bad language, we weren't actually using it. But if any of you out there do see the little twat, get him to call <laughs> XFM immediately. Yeah, and likewise, if you're listening, Carl, uh, you cheeky MF, <laughs> um, uh, well, you sexy MF, as you, Prince once said, yeah. then give us a ring, cause we'd love to talk to you. We just wanna find just out Just call in, we know you're listening. Little- <laughs> Shit. Amy Man, Red Vines. Brilliant. Lovely track. Mm -hmm. On XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Claire Sturgis, in for Carl Pilkington, little- <laughs> He hasn't called- <laughs> He may be nothing. really ill, I'm feeling a bit- I d- yeah. Oh. How ill is he though? I mean, do you know what I mean? How ill have you got to be to not be able to make a phone call? Yeah. I find I've got, hard so to I got sore bottom, and I made it in. Keep so. talking. <laughs> <laughs> I pulled a muscle in the bum. How? I don't know. And it really hurts. Have you tried to trace back through the week and figure out what yeah, made it? Yeah, I went to see the osteopath yesterday. Uh -huh. He put an elbow in it for half an hour. I cried. His own? <laughs> yeah. Is it? Oh, they got detachable elbows for that. Yeah. <laughs> Prosthetic <laughs> elbows. <laughs> elbows. Just hold this elbow in there for two hours and. Uh, yeah, yeah. Can I get that away? You can take that away. Though. I, don't, <laughs> yeah. I won't be needing that elbow <laughs> for quite a while. <laughs> <laughs> we had an email about, uh, Oliver the, uh, human -Z. For those that didn't watch it, there was a documentary last night about a, a chimp that was supposedly a human or was half Carl's human or might favourite seem programme like ever. Yeah. For a week, Carl has been saying it's gonna be brilliant. Oh, yeah. I wish he was here and to discuss it. And he's not here to discuss it, it sadly, yeah. but, um, uh, Lee Cranston has, uh, has emailed in and, uh, says, uh, I thought the best part of the Oliver program was the guy Vincent Pace, the oh, camp yeah. fellow at the piano, telling how he first met Oliver. Quote, he grabbed his female owner, turned her around and bent her over and went to mount her. Mm. I made her an offer to buy him the next day. <laughs> Vincent was then shown in a very nostalgic mood playing melancholic music. He obviously wanted some monkey action. He really- that's- yeah, that's- I mean it is potentially that, liable. That's liable. The libelous. We, we don't- we- you know, we- you know, it's a joke there. But- We it, take- I don't take any responsibility for what Lee Cranston says, or indeed the fact that he quite- he puts at the end, did he want to turn Oliver into a gay pansy? <laughs> <laughs> Question mark. That's Lee's <laughs> thoughts and opinions, so they don't it necessarily reflect really those of that. XFM. He sees the- the- the chimp mount a human and go, I've got to have that <laughs> yeah, chimp. I must have that, I must have that chimp. <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor Carl. Where that, is he? Call as him. you mentioned earlier, he was very well endowed. Apparently, I didn't see it myself. It was a big. It was a, a big, big boy. chimp. Big sure, boy. a big yeah. half boy. <laughs> yeah. A big half boy, half chimp. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Honestly, Juan on yeah. XFM 104.9. Right, I just called Carl again. I've been calling him all the time, trying to get through to him. Right, he's changed his message, so he is listening and I've got proof. So, can you just call the number, Claire? Yeah. Right? Right, call the number. Now listen to this. This is really annoying. <laughs> we should tell you now that this is not a, a, an amusing sketch or setup. No. What's happening there, Claire? Not quite happening for you? No, no, it's alright. We'll, we'll try, try that again. Try that again, Claire. Yeah. I'm livid now. I, it's, I, it's, I, I'm genuinely annoyed because you'll see, when you hear the message, you'll realise why. Right. I don't know who he thinks he is now. I, I, I'm beginning to wonder if, if his minor celebrity is going to his head. All this nice write-up in in Heat magazine. Yeah, it's changed him. Richard Anderson instantly has emailed in. Go on, Dickers Anderson. It's not happening, is it? Okay. Why not? Because I'm a bit stupid. Why? Why can't? Why I can't, can't? I can't work it out. Can can't I? figure it out. How would you yeah. call someone normally? Well, normally I just pick up the phone and dial it. Sure. No, I don't mean- <laughs> No, <know>. I mean- <laughs> But it's like I have a problem getting it through the desk. I tell you what, can I play an ad break and practice? Oh, <laughs> and pretend this didn't happen and then- Do you know, in a weird way, it's like, it's like having Carl. Here. It's like having Carl. Play the ads. I'll get back to you. Bit of Snoop. Never- and when did- when did a bit of Snoop ever hurt anyone, Steve? Absolutely. Uh, never, right. I don't think. Okay. Carl's away. He pulled the wool over Claire's eyes. There's a few people out there that believed he was ill. I knew he wasn't. In fact, at one point I thought, Maybe he is ill. Um, his message on his answer machine has changed in the last five minutes, and listen to it, and this is evidence that he's not ill, right? Okay, do we like go, then? Yeah. Uh, uh don't we don't? Yeah. Anderson, yeah. Richard Anderson, I should just say, has, uh, has, uh, yeah. got in touch. Okay. Here we go. Hold on. Here we go. Oh, oh, Claire! No, no, I can do it. Just tell All me right. about Anderson. This is ludicrous. Yeah, so uh, obviously Richard Anderson, he's, uh, he's humoured in his thoughts. Dicky Anders. <laughs> Anders. Anders. Randy Anders. Yeah. <laughs> Dickster. Dick Dickster. Dickmeister Dick General. Dick Meister General. And he says there's something making 
Have we got it clear? There's something- he says there's something making strange yelping noises in the thicket at the end of my garden. <laughs> Shall I go and prod it to see if it's calm? <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm, uh, sorry I'm not in today, but not well on that. Um, no more rock busters. I think that's what's affected me. It's got me down a bit. <laughs> so he's but, joking, um, yeah. The doctor said I'll- I'll be, uh, back swinging on my tyre in no time. So- so he was listening. He's clearly listening. He so he has, was listening because we said about swinging on the tire. message. At any time. Right. Carl, call me. In fact, I'll tell you what, we play a little game. Carl would appreciate this. Call, call me, Carl, or I'm gonna give out your number. What's the first five or six digits, Claire? Well, it's o oh, oh, seven nine six eight. O oh, seven nine six eight. Okay. Phone now, Carl. Start calling now. Right, give the next number, Claire. Uh, it's, it's you, you, you said give the next number. One. Make one. note of this, because okay. if you want to call, oh, call seven nine yourself. six eight, and the first number to be given out is one. He's not ill. He's- how do you feel now, Claire? Because he's made a fool of you, because well, no, you believed him. I mean, him. I actually he's made a monkey really out of you. for him yeah. last night. Um, but now, <laughs> past hour, I'm- I feel a little bit let down. Right, uh, uh, right, okay, so we give a number out every five minutes until Carl calls, because we know he's listening now, he's having- he's taking the piss. Um, he's not here, obviously, you can hear that. He could- if- it, that was as long as a link, so he could have been here. Um, he could e definitely call. Um, Are we so leaving this mess? Is this a message we're still leaving yeah, on his phone? Yeah. We're still leaving it. Good. Yeah. 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 Good. <laughs> Good, yeah. Why um, don't we leave the rest of the show on his phone? Yeah. As a yeah. message. Leave, leave it up. He's got yeah. to listen through it all so he can delete it. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, and, uh, the other thing, of course, is that he's not gonna get paid for this. No. So he- so he's thrown away 80 quid. <laughs> that's 80 right? pounds. Now, in Manchester, that's a week's wages, Easy. so he's obviously been spoiled. For, so for all his mank charm, he's down here, he's living the life of he Riley. He thinks 80 quid's nothing. He, he thinks 80 quid's nothing but already. But you could be buying what you're- you could be buying yourself a, your own horse. Yeah. You yeah. could probably get yourself a, a deposit on a flat. I just, I'd have thought so. Up I'd there. have thought so, yeah. And so, um, you know, on sun lamps, cause it's always dark. Yeah. He could- he could- he could go mental up there. Now- Dog so, piece of string. So what- what- so what's the first few digits we've given out? Oh, seven, nine, six, eight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, That's and the then, code. and, and then one. one. Okay, we give out, we give, give out, um, a Another number. Another calls for number digits. digits. So take that down, because we love calling him. Um, should we have a little bit of feed or something? Let me just yeah. tell you what, uh, what Dick has said. Uh, yeah. Yeah. he said, Richard Anderson, he also said, P.S. The show's still rubbish without Carl. <laughs> <laughs> still rubbish, <laughs> still rubbish without Carl. Now, is that a compliment? It's still rubbish without Carl. Which suggests he thought it might be better with, without Carl? No, I think he's, he means it's equally rubbish. Right. Brilliant. Yeah. Nothing Thanks. changes. Thanks, Dickers. Yeah, he's yeah. definitely Dick Meister. That's Feeder, Just The Way I'm Feeling, on XFM 104.9. Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Claire Sturgis. Well, he's defying me. He's not calling in. We're gonna give out his number and he's not calling in. That's even more annoying. What- who do you think he is? I don't know who he thinks he is. I- uh, I'll tell you what he- I'll tell you who he is. Yeah. <laughs> he is a little bold Mancunian. Let's never That's let him forget that. I don't know who he thinks he is, but there's the fact. I, just, Carl, call in, cos you're annoying me <laughs> and Steve. He's been slagging you off as well, Steve. Well, go on, what's In the week, say? you know, he was slagging you off. I mean, in the week I was joining in and laughing along, but now I'm thinking I'm gonna- I'm gonna- No, but now I'm thinking that you're more on my side than he is. Thanks very much, Rick. I'm glad to see you've come round. <laughs> He said he was. Uh, I was in the uh, in the in the uh, pub with him and um, uh, Johnny. All oh, right, so there's a little audience. Good. <laughs> <laughs> and he said he went. Oh, he went. Have you seen Men in Black too? I went. No. He said. Have you, Johnny? He went. No. He went. Oh, there's there's a thing in it that looks just like Steve. Mm. And I went. What? He went, it's a thing, he's got really gangly arms and, and, uh, uh, bulbous eyes and it just works really fast in the, uh, aliens registration thing. And I went, all right, I said, we'll bring that up Saturday. Since he's not here, you know, I th what do you think of that? Well, I, I, j I, <laughs> the, the reason is, that I think the problem I have with is this, that if, if I was to say things like that about Carl, I'd destroy him. I, I, he'd be a broken man after I'd finished with him. <laughs> Call in, Carl, or Steve's gonna say a few things about you. I'm gonna get a couple of home truths out there. I can't believe it. I cannot believe it. Yeah, we haven't- we, we were- uh, you know, at the time I was joining it, we have been, you know, slagging you off on other things as well. Sure, sure, But now sure. I'm thinking, maybe I, I- Maybe you were wrong. Maybe I was- yeah, maybe I was taking the mickey out of the wrong person behind their back. <laughs> because the night from Patti Smith, co-written of course with uh, Bruce Springsteen. Oh, it was a co-write, was yes, it? Yes, I thought he wrote. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. wow, there you go, learning something, learning something. Yeah. On XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Claire Sturgis. <laughs> no, Carl. Well, Carl's annoyed me. 
Um, he's not playing. He's not ill. Another digit um, from the number? Uh, yeah, just do one more digit, Claire. Are you serious, Sam? Yeah. Yeah. Five. Five. Yeah. Five. Five. Good. five, so one five. Okay, great. We'll just we'll keep doing that. But I'll tell you what, the best revenge is living well. Indeed. Why don't we just do a brilliant the remaining fifty minutes of of show okay. and show the people that we don't need Carl. High five. Let's do okay? it. Okay? You don't need Carl. Ooh, right, uh, let's go. Starting now. Some now. brilliant some brilliant stuff. Oh <laughs> I was You're gonna say something. Yeah, okay. yeah no. I, I remember when I was, I remember when I was growing up in Manchester. No, you can't. I, oh, 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 so it's funny to me. I tell you, X of um, one, two point nine. I said no. Can't I saw it, I, a, a weird thing. I saw I was, you know, um, we're in Leicester Square. I was coming through. Trying, I saw a hairy Chinese kid. Mm, no, I don't. That's it, it was weird because they're not used the area, are they? E, did I tell you about me auntie Florida? <laughs> Is that Steve? supposed to be Manchester? Did I e buy? Eck as like. Did I tell thee about me Auntie Flora, who shat herself for three hours once? Did I tell you? Oh, e, I don't. I, uh, oh, there was a woman born Carl, once. Carl, you have to phone us. We've Carl. got nothing. Oh God, he's so annoying, little twat. Beard. That's the uh, new one from Blur. Uh, out of time. Only three now. Probably had a sort of Carl equivalent. Who sort of thought, well, I can't, I can't be bothered with Graham Cox and yeah. they're probably at home <laughs> listening to that. <laughs> exactly. Playing guitar and they called him and said, well, you, you could play it on. He went, no, I'm ill. Yeah. Oh, I'm ill. Come on, Graham, just, if, if you're <laughs> just playing, I, I can hear you playing guitar now. No. No, I'm ill. Yeah. Have <laughs> they replaced Coxon? No. They haven't no. replaced him? No. Oh, right. Well, they probably will do when they go on tour, but I think they are yeah. sincere. Well, yeah, I, I play guitar, I don't know. <laughs> That's true enough, you're <laughs> pretty hot so, on the, uh, if, uh, Diamond, you want someone to, uh, Oh, actually, Steve, in, in, in answer to your question, for the live dates, uh, it's one of the blokes from The Verve. Oh, ex -verve, it's a remember? Did she interrupt me again? I Sorry, think so. Mate. I'm a fear oh in it. God, I can't I think I was talking. Yeah, I don't no. know if you were. You know, I'm a, I might be mental, but I think I was talking. <laughs> Claire, wh when's your radio show on? <laughs> <laughs> well, normally, when do you host a radio show? Am I allowed to plug it? Go on, yeah, go on. Monday to Thursday, 9 p.m. Well, oh, maybe, maybe we'll come along and start talking well, over I, you. No, I'm just wondering, Rick, I'm just wondering, who's listening at that time? My I mean, what time? We, we, we've got a listening. prime time which everyone is sat at home listening on a Saturday afternoon, Claire. Yeah. It's one of the best radio yeah, slots no one's in the going business. to football matches or shopping or anything like that. No, 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 no. I want a piece of the action. I need it. Yes. I need well, it. Well, I'll let you've got it. And uh, they're, um, they're playing a few, um, dates here and there, old Blur, old yeah. Blur. <laughs> good. We'll and that's off there. their new album, probably, with all the other songs <laughs> and yeah. that. Rick, I was watching TV last night, I just, sure. um, I think you might have been enjoying The Monkey Show, actually, I'm not sure, but there was an advert, and it reminded me of a little crush that I just felt I should express, because I wonder if, you know, I've often used the platform in the past to just express my feelings for people. Yeah. And I've, I realised now, for many, many years, I've had a big crush on the Scottish Widow, from the Scottish Widow adverts. The she's. I, I just. I just want to say to her. You know, is it because she's sort of mysterious and hooded? Partly that. It's also because I know. I guarantee she's available. Because she's just lost she's her husband. A widow. Yeah. And I just think it's time to stop grieving. I think you've been grieving too long. I think. I want to say to her, you're a beautiful lady. That's and she's probably. She's and she's probably got a big lump sum. I'm thinking she's probably got a sizable amount of cash. Yeah. She's obviously got a lot of spare time on her hands, not working or raising kids because she's wandering across the moorlands. Most yeah. Of the time her kids are probably grown up. I'm thinking it's time or, to- Or that- or they turn to crack or something. But I'm just saying this, I think it's just time to say, yes, he was a great man. He was a good man. He was a lovely guy. He worked but hard he's gone. Man. It's he's time gone. to move on. He wouldn't want to see you like this. No. Still grieving after twenty-five years. No, he'd want- he'd want to see her being humped by a big lanky thing with steamed up glasses, I reckon. I'll be honest with you, he hasn't got much say in the matter. He's dead. Well, alright, don't get nasty. And she's, frankly- She's still not She is squandering that money. She could be out- she could be in Europe, she could be um, in Barbados or Hawaii, she could be spending that cash. She could get, she could lose the hooded short and maybe slip into a nice bikini. Do you know what? I think she's, she's kept herself in shape. I reckon she's wearing nothing under that. That's shroud. what I'm thinking. Dirty <laughs> slut. And I'm, I'm assuming, I'm assuming as she's Scottish, uh, that he. She couldn't wait thrifty. for him to go. She couldn't wait for the poor bloke to go. He was obviously. I bet he was a little bit thrifty. He's probably got quite a lot stashed away that she's slowly working her way through. Yeah. And I'm, oh, I want to find dong. out. I want to find out how he died. Yeah, I'm Cause intrigued. Because if, because if, if I find it's like, oh, it's, it, there was a there, there was a roller skate on the top of the stairs. <laughs> exactly. I'm going to reopen the investigation. If it was in any way suspicious. Yeah, yeah. Questions. So, your husband's dead, and she went, oh no, where's the money? Yeah. <laughs> 
Steve Absolutely. Merchant's outside. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Built like a donkey. Yeah. He's built like a chi- he's built like Oliver the chimpanzee. Yeah, and he wants to get at it. Yes. He's so bought his tandem. He's <laughs> yeah, hop on go- the back. We're going off to the moors. Yeah. He's tr- he's gonna fly executive class. <laughs> yeah. His passport is valid. <laughs> <He's>, <laughs> I know he that. He knows that much. He's got another ten years <laughs> on the passport. <laughs> well, uh, I'll tell you what, the boys from Blur, they don't rock. Sure. Should we show them how to rock with a bit of bad company? It. It's a classic. Turn it up, Claire. Bad company. Can't get enough of your love. I'm in a rock mood because yeah, Carl's made that. my blood boil. Yeah. Really. I mm. might even play a song, you're probably too young, called, uh, Spirit of the Radio by Rush. It's sort of like, for rockers, I put it like that, it's like the ultimate sort of pomp, uh, rock, progressive pop song ever. Uh-huh, it's, it's, uh-huh. it's classic. Yeah, you, can, you can, you can, you you might hate it, or you'll love it, um, or you listen to it ironically. I love it. Well, you know, I, I just, I, I was listening to Led Zeppelin recently. I never really understood the rock phenomenon before, but I just understand it now. It just gets in your blood. It's yeah. extraordinary. Crank yeah. it up loud and it is just visceral and amazing. And, uh, I wish I could play the guitar. Sure. Do you know what I feel like doing? What? Writing a little sort of hymn or a ballad. About to Carl? To Carl. Yeah. We've tried threatening him. That's not worked. Give up one more digit. We got half hour to go. Right, because we're three digits. So it's O, what is it? O? O7968. Yeah. One five. Next digit, please. Seven. Okay, one five right. seven. I Excellent. hope you're making a note of that. You'll be able to phone Carl, leave messages, tell him what you think of him. Uh, unless he phones. He can stop this at any time by just simply calling That's here in the studio. He can just call and say, okay, don't. Uh, uh, he can just call and say, please don't give my number out. And I'll go. As I always do when I'm winding him up and I'm slapping his head and I'm sort of like spitting on him and stuff, eventually he goes, shout, stop it, and I go, well, you only have to ask. Exactly. So if he calls, I go, you only have to ask. Yeah. Flaming lips on, uh, XFM 104.9. Well, we got through it without Carl. I think so, yeah, I've enjoyed myself. Didn't mention him much, did we? No, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think, I think we need so. him. I always quite enjoy it when he's absent, actually. I, I know, be because, fairing. yeah, because we can have a nice chat as opposed to yeah. him just going, Yeah. remember when I had Chinese air and they were old women yeah. eating her own legs. It's and just And my dad put things, eh? a forest gump. In a wheelie bin. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Claire pr- pr- brings a certain kind of level of class to it, dare I say that, you know. She, yeah. She's inept in her own way. In her own way, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, know, there's no one, oh, no, no, there's, <laughs> no, there's no one any good working no, out. I mean, no, 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 I don't no, want to no, give no, you no, no, there's no, there's no, like, proper, uh, 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 I, pr- the only proper DJ is probably Camfield, yeah. I'd have thought, because he's been, he's, he's, Nearly thirteen now, and he's been in the <laughs> yeah. he's been in the radio twelve and a half years. Yeah. Um. Yeah. See, he took they, they tested him, and he's half human, half Vance. <laughs> yeah. Which is <laughs> which is quite yeah. He's got quite weird. a lot of. I think he's got the forty eight chromosomes. Yeah. That Tommy Vance has got. Yeah. Yeah, that uh, makes one Tommy Vance. Yeah, Tommy Vance, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and a little bit extra. Yeah, well, because one of those chromosomes is pure Jack Daniels. Well, yeah, it's yeah. It's just Jack Daniels chromosome. It's, it's, it well, corresponds yeah, yeah. exactly to a and Jack there's, Daniels. And there's some, uh, Lemmy genes, <laughs> exactly. which I think you'll find. In there as well. In there. But, um, uh, although, I'll tell you what, I, I share with Camfield a, a couple of loves. Um, I, I agree that one of the greatest programmes of all time is Columbo. Columbo is brilliant. It is. Amazing. Yeah. And uh, they're, they're showing them all. There's so many channels showing them now. I think Granada Plus show them. I think BBC show them. Yeah. I think I, uh, everyone's got a bit I of it. I think he's it's made, um, 18,000 episodes, Are apparently. Are they still making them, though? Uh, I think no, they keep th- they, up. No, they did in the 90s. They're, they're not quite as good, but I think the original ones, they're great. He's got this great character, and I share that with him. I, you know, I do like a bit of rock. I th- should we play Rush? It's just oh, spirit of the radio. Yeah, I mean, yeah. we get we get canned by people who like new metal, and Blur and that and, th- and those t- trendy bands, all that the yeah. kids bands and yeah, that. But you it? think this is pure? Yeah, I pure don't think rock. this would feature in X Ray magazine. Mm-hmm. We've got some great bands in them. They've got Kaloop, They've got <laughs> Demp. They've got Flap Nibble coming out with their new single. It's an EP yeah. and uh, Strep. Oh, the oh, early, excellent. not the not the latest Strep. No. The early Strep. The unrecorded years, which <laughs> is the only ones I like by Strep. And uh, <laughs> that guy in it, you know, the, the drummer Kibble. He's gone. He's got his own. He's going fringe. He, he's in for a chat uh, with Christian on the breakfast show, where you could win a trip to O'Neill's in Camden. <laughs> this is Rush. <laughs> <laughs> Rush and Spirit of the Radio. <laughs>
everything in that. <laughs> let's look quick. Let's put every type of music. Okay, go to reggae, into rock. Okay, look, opera, opera. Go, go mental now. Go mental on the drums. Double that. Double the foot. How many, how many bass drums have you got? Just to go mental on it. Yeah, yeah. Right. It is obscene. That is everything in that, isn't it? <laughs> how long is it? Like four and a half minutes. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. That's that's lovely. They def people don't play music like that that's anymore. So, there's only three of them. I just think of yeah. There's that and just w one day in Canada. Yeah. They just went right. We might. We're, let's make. We're only gonna write one single. Yeah. So let's put every type of music <laughs> exactly, into that yeah. single. It's almost like a stars on forty five. Yeah. Version of music. Of yeah. All time. Of, of of every, of every music rock. they've heard. Exactly. Yeah. Do, are they it? still going? Do they still Catch play? I don't know. I don't know. I have no idea. But that was for Camfield. There was bad company there in Rush for Camfield. Columbo. <laughs> <laughs> that was for Camfield as well. The A team. Do you remember once when we were talking about the A team and I was slagging it off on your show in the old XFM? Yeah, yeah. And I was going, I, I mean, the, the, I quite like the A team, but it is too. It's sometimes it's too far fetched to enjoy without it being ironic or it being for kids. And um, I, I could hear fuming from outside. I could feel him <laughs> going. <laughs> 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 he didn't know who to call. He wanted to call Vance or someone or Lemmy. He didn't know, <laughs> right? And then I, I, I said, um, and uh, if you can't find the, 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 you know, find the A team, they out, they outwit the might of the FBI every single week. But an old woman who's having trouble with her landlord can find them. Yeah. And the door burst <laughs> open, <laughs> and Campy went. That is because Hannibal sometimes disguises himself as an elderly Chinaman. <laughs> yeah. And that was his explanation for yeah. the whole series. Yeah. Ah, oh, that was for Camfield. Yeah, that's lovely. That's for his twelfth birthday, which is coming yeah, up very 13, soon. Oh, he's thirteen. 13 yeah, 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 yeah. Teenager. Yeah. Oh, he's gonna, he's gonna rock, Steve. Indeed. All the phones going. Play that. Break a lance. Oh, phone. it might be Carl. Oh. Wow, here's a bit of a turn up for the books. Carl Pilkington on the line. Right. Yeah, where you been? I'm, I'm off there, well, aren't I? Right. Okay. What's the matter with you? Just um, it's a bit bunged up and that, and it's got the shakes, got that sort of. That shaky thing to get. Yeah, that's because you didn't eat last time when Suzanne was at work. Yeah, well, I think that's what brought it on. Plus, she was away in the week and I put some wet jeans on. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, I think that's what's caused the problem. Well, when did you put them on your head? No, they were just on the maiden and the, the legs felt dry, but they were. Just on the what? On the, the what? Have you uh, got the maiden? the maiden? What was she doing there? <laughs> what do you mean? On the maiden that you put clothes on. What? Your clothes horse. Maiden. Your clothes horse. Well, yeah. Right, okay, so you put wet jeans on, yeah? So, uh, that's why I'm ill on that. I'm right. not having a good time, I've been watching the football. So you're just sitting at home watching telly, where you could have been sitting here? Well, I would have been better off there, because I've got a chair there. I've got no chair at home at the moment, because I sold it last week. <laughs> why did you sell a chair? I what, you only had one chair? What? Look, can't we just, um... I just was calling up to let you know I was all right and that. We're not interested in that. We want to know about the chair. <laughs> I sold it. I had a little two-seater and the, I sold it because I'm getting a new one, but I've got to wait another month. So, so you've got to sat. sit on the floor for so a month. So you sold a chair before you had another one? Well, she might not have wanted to buy it in a, in a month or something. So I got rid of it whilst I could. She was all right, buddy. We'll talk about that next week. Oh, you're going to be in next week? I look forward to that then. That's a dynamite piece of radio to tune in for. The yeah. day Carl sold a chair. Brilliant. All right. Are you all right then? It's going all right. But why did you take this long to call? We asked you to call since the because very beginning. We've been that. phoning you. Why is your phone yeah, being switched I heard, off? I heard the beginning. I, I heard the beginning of the show. I thought, yeah, it's going all right. The there and stuff. Turned it off. Um, you fact, turned the, it off. No, no. I put a tape in though because even though I'm ill, I'm still showing an interest in it. Well, you're not. Yeah. If you're watching football and shaking. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll listen back to it later, so I hope you haven't been dissing me. No. Right? Yeah. Definitely not. Don't so listen back to it, it's not worth it, but we haven't been dissing yeah. you, no. And I've just been watching, uh, a bit of football, right? Did you watch yeah. the monkey program last night? You told us to watch yeah. the monkey program, we all stayed and watched the monkey program. Alright, wasn't it? Rubbish, right? wasn't it? Obviously, obviously not half chimp, half human. Well, I mean, they, they missed out a lot of the... The interesting bits. They didn't have any interesting bits. Those are the bits that you made up to make no, it more the interesting. Bits, the bits that I told you about about three months ago before they decided to make the program. Yeah. What were the bits that you came up with? Well, they, they missed out the bits about, uh, you know, the zookeeper. Right, there wasn't a zookeeper. Yeah, go on. Well, there was, but they left that bit out. <laughs> well, okay, <laughs> they fine. Out, and they left, and they, they left out the bit where it ran for mayor <laughs> in 1975. <laughs> In terms of the, those that did research, they actually went and filmed it, you read it on the internet. Yeah. 
Yeah. Chances are you're the one with the facts wrong. Yeah, they, they, uh, they, I think they also left out the bit when it jumped over three double-decker buses on a- <laughs> Yeah. Motorbike. On Evil Knievel's motorbike. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh. I can't believe it. I cannot believe it. Not only do you not bother turning up, but you turn off the radio and start watching football. Oh, uh, yeah, I turned it off, but I've, I've recorded it. I'll listen back later and, and sort of- Well, what good is that? Sort of, I, I like to keep, you know, keep it in shape and that. I'll have a word next week. All right. If you receive any phone calls from people you don't know, we don't know anything about that. <laughs> Instantly, we don't know why, why that is happening. That is just gonna be a weird spooky <laughs> thing, so. And, and don't bother telling the story about, um, Men in Black 2 either, cause I don't think people would be interested. Um, uh, actually on the subject of Men in Black 2. <laughs> what? Have you seen that, Steve? No, I haven't, Carl. Tell oh, me about you it. you should see it. Go on. Why? Cause there's this, there's this, um, there's this thing in it. <laughs> Go on. Uh What, a stupid, bald, mancunian tosser? No, weirder than that. <laughs> there isn't anything weirder than that. <laughs> hey guys, it was gangly. <laughs> <laughs> Keep talking. And, uh, you've got to see it, cos you wouldn't believe out the likeness and that you've got to see it out tonight. Right. It's not as weird, it had a normal voice, right? <laughs> He's not even here! I'll tell you what, mate, it ain't worth coming in next week. <laughs> oh! Oh, stay on the line, Carl. Play a record player. <laughs> Kings of Leon, Molly's Chambers. What do you think of that, Carl? All right. <laughs> There's a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> oh, another I'd insightful say what, remark. Steve is not a, a fan now. Not only does he know you've been slagging him off behind his back. No, I wasn't slagging Steve. If you get it out on the DVD tonight, you'll know I'm not slagging you off. It could be your brother. <laughs> 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 I know the fact that he, it makes it worse, but he's thinking you're gonna go, oh, he wasn't slugging me off. It does look like me. I do think I'm an alien. I love the fact that you hope Steve will go, he's got a point. It's the, it's, no, it's a spitting image. Yeah. I am, seriously, Carl, I'm really angry. I'm so angry with you at the moment. You haven't seen it yet. No, I know, because I know what it's gonna be, and I'm just, I, why? I'm what's, fuming. What's, I'll tell you why I'm angry, because he doesn't do it in jest. No, but what do, do you interest? think it's gonna look like? What do you think this thing's gonna look like? Gonna look ludicrous. It's not gonna look anything like me. But no, he's gonna, it like, does. pretend it does. No, Go it on, does. what? Go on! No, it does look like you. Yeah, of course it does. And you looked like the, uh, human Z. <laughs> well... Yeah. I mean, to be honest, you did a bit, Carl. You walked like him, you bowled like him, you got a sort of gormless face like him. <laughs> Any more? I don't smoke. That does. <laughs> I'm not arguing with you, I'm not well on that. <laughs> oh, you're not well. What exactly is wrong with you, you whinger? Well, uh, it's just, do you know, like a, I always tell you about the, um, restless leg syndrome I've got. <laughs> it's like that, yeah. but all over. <laughs> so you're <laughs> just shaking around the house? I'm just, yeah. What do you look like? Elvis? What are you doing you're shaking around the I'll house? I'll tell you, with your bald hair, you're probably like an enormous vibrator. <laughs> 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 oh, God. <laughs> That's what you probably look like if you strip <laughs> naked. Oh, you'll have a Scottish widow coming round. Oh, dear. That's, what's the name, by the way? I heard you talking about that. That's, um... Amanda Lamb. Amanda Lamb, who's in the Place in the Sun programme. Is she yeah. actually a widow? <laughs> Is she a Scottish widow? Uh, just, just, uh... Hoots, man, my husband's <laughs> dead. Do you want any money and a bit of my clam? <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> All right. That's the sort of uh, quality you've missed out on today. Well, anyway, you're going to be back next week. I can't, we, we, we need you back next week. Yeah. yeah. Well, do you know? Uh, also, how did you know you were going to be ill today? Because you phoned and arranged this yesterday. Convenient. And I yeah, spoke yeah, to you yesterday yeah, and you didn't yeah, sound yeah, very I felt, ill. I felt ropey yesterday. Afternoon. You've got a bit of a bunged up nose. Even though. <laughs> I have a bit of a bunged up nose. I still sorted it out. <laughs> yeah. oh, I'm a little bit sweaty. Paul, well, sorting out does not mean you phone up Sturgis and send her down. That's not sorting it out. That's making things worse. <laughs> Have you learned nothing? Thanks, Claire. If you're not part of the solution, you're part All of the right, problem. Mate. Yeah. Ah, oh, my little, my legs a little bit achy. <laughs> oh, I'm wearing wet jeans. Oh, I put wet jeans on again. I have on me, on me, my lasagna wasn't, it was frozen. <laughs> Can you hear the venom and hatred in our, in our voices today? We genuinely are upset and angry with you. Yeah. Can't believe it. I cannot believe that you'd, I mean, oh. Right, well, the thing is, we'll be back to normal next week, right? We've got Billy Elliot doing the film next week. Right. Uh. Any prizes? 
got some good stuff. Have you got any films with Burt Reynolds in to give away on VHS? Oh, well, uh, I'll see you then. Great, we're looking forward to it already. I'll see you later. All see right. you later. Hot, hot, heat, bandages, XFM, we're off, innit? That's it, it's all over yeah. it. Back next week. Yeah. Thanks, Claire. Bye. Total yeah. respect. Yeah, yes. Nice Keep it real. See ya.